So you're like me and you enjoy the deliciousness of salmon sushi on occasion, but find yourself wondering, is this farmed or wild salmon and which one should I be eating? Which one is better for me on a health level and also what's better for the environment? I've heard some vaguely disturbing things about salmon farming, but what's true and what's not? Should I be eating salmon at all? These were some of the questions that plagued me because even though I'm a marine biologist, I didn't really know much about this pink fish that I was eating. So I did a ton of digging through scientific literature, news articles, documentaries, government reports, you name it. And there was a lot of information to get through, a lot of misinformation, a lot of lies, spanning political, ecological, social, financial, and business realms, you name it. But I ingested all of this information, I debated it internally, and I came to my own personal conclusion as to what salmon I will be eating going into the future. But I wanted to make the most out of all of this effort. And so that is why I am sharing the lessons that I have learned with you today. Now, I'm not going to be able to cover all of the complexity because this is a huge topic. So for this video, I'm mostly going to be focusing on the environmental aspect of wild versus salmon farming because as a marine biologist, this I think is the most interesting and the most important. Also, at the end of the day, I realized that eating farmed salmon is pretty much the same thing as eating any kind of meat that comes from a big farm on land. It has the same issues like antibiotics and pesticide use and hormones and all that jazz. So if you avoid eating meat products that comes from big farms because of all these issues, you should avoid eating farmed salmon. But if you eat meat that comes from a big farm, you shouldn't really have an issue eating farmed salmon. But if we're talking about impact on the environment, especially when it comes to farm versus wild salmon, and what's the best choice if you care about the planet, well, that's when the story starts to get real juicy. But I just want to provide you with some straightforward, helpful information to help you make the best choice next time you see salmon on the grocery shelves, and if, like me, you care about the ocean and you want to help protect it. And I'm going to do this by debunking three of the major lies that we are commonly told about salmon in general. The first is that we all need to be eating salmon for its health benefits. The second is that farm salmon is an eco-friendly and sustainable alternative to wild caught salmon. And the third is that wild caught salmon is in fact 100% natural and wild salmon. Now, the reason that salmon is a pretty big topic is that it's a ubiquitous type of protein that is consumed in the millions of tons every year around the world. It's this delicious buttery fish that we all enjoy, and it's a multi-billion dollar industry that is only expected to grow in the future because of increasing global demand. You know, the general trend around the world is that people have more disposable income to spend on higher quality foods, and there's this rising awareness of the benefits of leading healthier lifestyles. And salmon is often marketed as one of the healthiest types of proteins that we can eat. And for sure, it's low in saturated fats, it's got vitamins and minerals, and in particular, it has a high concentration of omega-3 fatty acids, which our bodies do need. But the lie here is that we all need to be consuming salmon in particular to get these omega-3 fatty acids. We can in fact get omega-3 from a number of other different types of fish and shellfish, including things like mackerel, sardines, herring, anchovy, oysters, mussels. But also we can get all of the omega-3 we need from plant-based sources, the powerhouses that are chia seeds, kidney beans, soy, walnuts, and even from seaweed, which I think is going to be a hugely sustainable growing industry into the future. But not every person on the planet needs to be consuming salmon for its health benefits. Now, please humor me for this next little bit because we as humans often tend to think of fish purely as a food source, as a resource or a commodity, because that's how most of us interact with fish, as a piece of protein that lands up on our plates. But I think central to this discussion is to remember that salmon are wild animals, living beings that have formed part of this intricate planet that we live on for millions of years and what a life they lead. They return to the exact same river in which they were born after spending years at sea and traveling thousands of kilometers. Their grueling journeys up those rivers, often fighting raging rapids to spawn for the next generation, is literally the stuff of legends. And their lives are so deeply entwined with others, providing food to dozens of other species, including things like bears and birds, 
The life cycle of the salmon is the transformation of the ocean into living things that come ashore and become the biggest trees in the world. So far from just being a nutrient dense piece of protein that ends up on our plate, salmon are the backbone of vibrant forest and river communities basically across the entire northern hemisphere. But salmon have also been an important fish to us as humans for thousands of years and they have formed central components to certain cultures across the northern hemisphere up to today where they are the multi-billion dollar industry that they are in terms of recreational subsistence and commercial fisheries. And so big money is involved and where big money is involved, industry is involved. And so enters the era of salmon fish farms. And this is where it starts to get really controversial. Now, I think the initial idea of salmon farming was great. You know, wild populations of salmon simply cannot sustain the current level of global consumption and demand. And so wild salmon in particular were in quite a steep decline because of things like overfishing, but also things linked to habitat destruction because of dams and that whole story. But essentially salmon farming was seen as a way to continue to supply the global demand while reducing pressure on wild salmon populations. I mean, we farm on land to provide ourselves with enough food, so why not do the same in the sea? And there are a number of truly sustainable and great seafood species that are currently being farmed in aquaculture facilities across the world, but is salmon one of them? Now, the people who work on salmon farms and benefit from them continue to repeat the story that farm salmon is an eco-friendly and sustainable alternative to wild caught salmon. But this is definitely a claim we need to interrogate because up to 70% of the salmon consumed across the world comes from farms. So it is a big deal. And most of this farm salmon only comes from two countries. Norway consistently produces just over 50% of the world supply of farm salmon. Chile sits somewhere around 25% and there are a few other countries that produce small amounts. But essentially, a really small area is responsible for supplying almost the entire global supply of salmon. Okay, so what are the conditions like on these salmon farms? Now, very briefly, for those who don't know, the vast majority of salmon farming is done in the ocean in these big open net pens. And um, so essentially the fish are swimming in the ocean, but they're just confined by these big nets. And these nets need to be placed in protected and sheltered areas because they need to be protected from big waves and storm surges and things like that. And that's why Norwegian fjords make a great place for salmon farms, but also things like coastal bays and inlets are popular places for these salmon net pens. Now, in these sheltered ecosystems, these nets are stocked to the absolute brim. We're talking more than three fully grown fish of about 75 centimeters in the space of one meter cubed. So that's a lot of fish. And a lot of fish means a lot of fish poop. And all of their poop sinks down to the bottom of the ocean floor where it forms kind of like this toxic sludge, destroying any kind of ecosystem underneath these nets. And in some severe cases, all of these nutrients from the fish poop and the extra food and pellets and everything forms algal blooms. And these algal blooms consume all of the oxygen in the water and suffocate all of the wildlife in the area, including the farm salmon themselves. Imagine being suffocated by your own shit. I think one of the worst examples of this comes from Macquarie Harbor in Tasmania, where we have this big bay filled with salmon fish farms and this teeny tiny little outlet where all of the extra nutrients and poop are supposed to flow out into the sea, which obviously it doesn't. So this ecosystem has experienced severe oxygen depletion, which has driven one species in particular, the Mogian skate, to the brink of extinction. Sounds real sustainable, doesn't it? Now, similarly with land-based agriculture, cram a whole bunch of animals together in one space and the thing that is bound to happen is the spread of disease and pests. And for salmon in particular, this manifests as an infestation of lice. Copepods that attach themselves to the salmon and feed on their mucus, skin, tissue, muscle, 
not very pleasant. And these infestations can get really severe, not only causing problems for the salmon themselves, but these lice will spread to other natural populations of salmon in the area as well as other fish. So it causes negative consequences for the whole ecosystem. So we're starting to see that life in these net pens is not very pleasant. You have these fish that are in really cramped conditions and this is a species that usually likes to spend most of its life swimming alone. There are these lice that feed on them so it's not so nice and one can't blame them for trying to escape at the first opportunity which is what they do. Oftentimes these net pens will fail and you'll have thousands of farmed salmon escaping into the ecosystem around them. They then start competing with the natural salmon for food resources. There's the potential for them to breed with natural salmon and reduce their genetic fitness. So it's a whole disaster in and of itself. So to conclude this section on salmon farming, you have ecosystem destruction. You have just about the extinction of other natural species. You have negative consequences on the wild salmon populations, not to mention the awful conditions that the farm salmon themselves are in. Does that sound like a sustainable and eco-friendly alternative to you? I don't think so. I'm not convinced. And in fact, this industry has found themselves in such hot water and there have been so many calls from various environmental agencies around the world to stop these open net pens and to move these operations onto land-based recirculating tank systems. In fact, in British Columbia, there are plans in the pipeline to completely transition away from ocean open net pens to these land-based systems. In addition, the Monterey Bay Seafood Watch which is a great resource if you're trying to find sustainable seafood options, pretty much recommends avoiding all of the salmon that comes from these open net um, pens, but does recommend eating salmon from these land-based recirculating systems, although there aren't very many of them around. This Seafood Watch also recommends eating US wild caught salmon. So let's talk a little bit about that because this is a whole other kettle of fish. Excuse the pun. Now this next section only really focuses on what is happening in Northern America, but it's here that we encounter the trickiest lie of the lot. That if you're eating wild caught salmon, you're eating 100% wild natural salmon. Let's talk salmon hatcheries, shall we? Now we as humans, for whatever reason, believe we have absolute dominion over this planet and everything that lives on it. I'm God. So when salmon numbers started to decline in Northern America because of things like overfishing and damming, instead of thinking to ourselves, heck, we seem to be out of balance with the world around us and we should alter our behavior. Nope. Instead, they came up with this idea of restocking wild rivers with salmon that were hatched and reared in captivity on land. This crazy idea was cooked up all the way in the 1870s and since then the US government has spent billions of dollars on taxpayer money on hatching and rearing salmon juveniles in hundreds of US state-owned hatcheries around the country. These captive reared salmon juveniles are then released into the rivers where they're allowed to live their lives, go out to sea, return to the river in an attempt to replace the vast number of wild salmon that were being killed. And as far as I can tell, this is really just a plan to keep fishers and fisheries happy. You know, the US government wants to ensure that there's enough fish in the river so that we can just keep catching as many as we please. And they're spending big bucks on it. One article I saw estimated that the government spends between 250 to 650 US dollars per salmon that returns to the river as an adult to be caught. You know, I do think these hatcheries have good intentions. They are trying to stop the decline of wild salmon and trying to bolster their populations with these hatchery reared fish. But unfortunately, the latest evidence shows that not only are they falling short of this goal, but they're actually having the opposite effect and negatively impacting truly wild, natural populations of salmon. I mean, you have these fish that are reared in captivity that are then released into the rivers. They are genetically different to the wild salmon and they are less fit. You know, they're sort of brought up in these tanks and so they're not as capable of surviving in the wild. They compete with the wild salmon for food and then they also breed with the wild salmon which lowers everybody's genetic fitness and so I don't know I kind of feel like if you follow this whole thought experiment through to the end I don't know how they could have ever got to the conclusion that this would have been beneficial for wild salmon. So what is a person to do? 
and I know you're not going to like this because I didn't like it when I came to this conclusion, but we all need to reduce our consumption and the demand of salmon on a global scale. After all of this research, I have come to believe that there are no truly sustainable or eco-friendly salmon options out there at the moment. And we as a global community sharing this planet with millions of other species do really just need to take stock of the impact that we are having on those other species. And we all just need to reduce our consumption of salmon and potentially even eliminate it from our diets. Especially, you know, if you're like me, I live in South Africa, so all of our salmon is imported and it likely comes from some farm somewhere in Norway, which is destroying Norwegian fjords. And this is something that I just can't really be behind anymore. So as much as it saddens me, I have come to the personal decision to completely eliminate salmon from my diet. I'm not going to consume it any longer because it just doesn't align with the values that I hold dear to me. And you all need to make your own decision. You all need to decide what is more important to you. Is it more important to just simply enjoy the salmon and not think about it? Or is it more important to you to realize what is going on behind the scenes and realize that that simple piece of fish is leading to ecosystem destruction and species extinction and just all of these crazy negative impacts and that is something you need to decide for yourself so i'm very curious to hear your thoughts on the matter please let me know down in the comments below obviously this is a very controversial topic there's going to be lots of different opinions um but you know i have followed the evidence to a conclusion that i you know for me personally resonates and makes sense and aligns with my values but let me know down below if you've come to a different conclusion or what you think if you eat salmon or going to carry on eating salmon stop eating salmon i'm just i'm very curious so let me know and on that note i will see you guys in the next video